Once there was a lovesick young man called Kilhuch, but he wasn't lovesick in the ordinary way. His stepmother had sworn a destiny on him that he should love no other than the maiden called Alwyn. Perhaps Kilhuch didn't know it, but at that moment the fate of the world fell onto his shoulders, and very inexperienced shoulders they were. But lucky for Kilhuch, his cousin was the great Arthur, and it was to Arthur that he went, rightfully seeking help from his kinsmen. Alwyn's father was a terrible giant called Uspadadin, and the older he grew, the greater his size and his temper became, and the more he neglected the care and protection of his kingdom. Uspadadin knew that Alwyn must marry soon, and yet he knew that the hero who won her would take his kingdom and his life from him. And while awaiting that day, his land languished as it longed for the renewal of its king. Aspadadan demanded that Kilhuch pay a bride price for his daughter, one that was so dangerous to obtain that it would surely be the death of any suitor. That payment included a comb, razor, and shears, which were lodged in the bristles between the ears of a huge and terrible boar known as Turch Truth. The hunting of Turk Truth was a foolhardy enough question itself, but Espadadin made it known to Kilhoch that he would never accomplish it without a special dog called Dridwen, and only one hunter in the world could hold Dridwen on his special leash in order to control him. Mabon, son of Modron, was that hunter. But Mabon had been stolen from his mother when he was but three nights old. No one knew where he was. No one knew whether he still lived at all. Arthur and his closest companions determined that in order to hunt the boar, they must find Mabon. But in order to find Mabon, they must first find his kinsman, Aithoil, son of Eir. Aithoil was imprisoned in Gloucester, and it was Glui himself who stood atop the wall and parleyed with Arthur's men. Why do you approach this place, he shouted. I have nothing good that you could wish to take, yet you come here to do me harm. We have no wish to harm you, they replied. We only seek your prisoner. Glui agreed to help them and handed Ithoil over to them, although he had not planned to free him. Next, Arthur sent his man Gurhir on a mission to find Mabon. It was right that Gurhir should seek Mabon, because he could speak all languages, even those of birds and animals. Arthur sent Aithoil with him on this search, along with two of Arthur's greatest men, Kai and Bedwyr. I am hopeful of your success in this mission, said Arthur. The first they approached was the black bird of Kilguri, and Gurhir said to her, Do you know anything of Mabon, son of Modron, who was stolen on the third night from between his mother and the wall? The blackbird replied, When I first came here, I was just a young bird. I found a smith's anvil standing unused. No work was done on it, save the work I did, sharpening my beak upon it every evening. Today, the anvil is worn away to a lump of iron the size of a nut. So long have I been here. I swear that I have heard nothing of the man you seek. But as you are Arthur's messengers, it is right that I take you to an animal older than myself, who may yet have news of Mabon. Allow me to guide you to him. Soon, they arrived at the place where the stag of Hredunvra dwelt. O oh, stag of Hredunvra, we are Arthur's messengers. We know of no animal who is older than you. Do you know anything of Mabon, son of Modron, who was stolen from her side on his third night of life? When I first came here, said the stag, I had only my small plain antlers of one tine, and in this clearing there was a small plain sapling, which grew into an oak of a hundred great branches. Today there is nothing left of that oak but a red stump. In all this time, from my coming here until today, I have heard nothing of the man you seek. But I myself will guide you, since you come from Arthur, to where you will find an animal who is older than I. He led them to the owl of Cumcauluid. I have brought you messengers from Arthur, said the stag. Do you know anything of Mabon, son of Modron, who was taken on his third night of life from his mother's side? 
If I knew this, said the owl, I would tell you. When I first came here, the great valley you see before you was a wooded glen. A race of men arrived and cut it down. In time, another wood grew in its place. Again men came and stripped it away, and in time it grew once more. The wood you see before you now is that third growth, and I am so old that my wings are like stumps. Yet in all this time, from youth to old age, I have heard nothing of the one you seek. Still, I would be honored to guide you to the dwelling place of the oldest animal of all, the eagle of Guernabui. When they came to the eagle, Gurhir spoke, Great eagle of Guernabui, we, the messengers of Arthur, have come to ask you whether you know anything of Mabon, son of Modron, who was taken from his mother's side on his third night of life. The eagle of Guernabui spoke to them then, saying, In times long past I came to this place, and I used to perch on a great stone, so tall that from its height I could peck at the stars in the night sky. So long have I lived that my claws have worn that stone away to the height of a hand's breadth. Yet from youth to old age, I have not heard of the one you seek. But I have a tale to recount. Once upon a time, I flew about Llyn Llyw, hunting my food. There, I sank my talons into a salmon of great size, thinking I would feast on it for days. But the salmon was strong, and hauled me under the water and into the depths, and it was hard for me to escape with my life. I gathered my kindred, and we went to make war on the salmon of Llyn Llyw, intending to destroy him. But he sent messengers to me to sue for peace. Then he came to me and asked me to remove the many tridents that fishermen had cast into him, for they troubled him sorely. Ten and forty tridents I took from his back, and I tell you that unless he knows something of the one you seek, no one does. I will be your guide to his dwelling place. When they arrived at Llyn Llyw, the eagle spoke, Look, noble salmon, I have come to you with messengers from Arthur. Tell us if you have any tidings of Mabon, son of Modron, who was taken from his mother's side on his third night of life. That which I know I will tell you, replied the salmon. Every flood tide carries me up the river, where I come to the bend in the wall of Cairloyu, and there dwells as much grief as I have ever found before. But lest you doubt me, come and ride upon my shoulders, I will show you. Kai and Gurhir went with the salmon riding on his shoulders. He swam until they came to the wall of Cairloyu. From the other side of the wall they could hear weeping and wailing. What man weeps from within this cell, called Gurhir. I am one who has true cause to weep within these walls. It is I, Mabon, son of Modron, who is imprisoned here. No one has ever been confined in such a mournful imprisonment as this. Neither the captivity of Hlidflau Erangt, nor the imprisonment of Graid, son of Eri, was more doleful. Is there hope for your ransom by gold or silver, asked Gurhir, or must you be freed by the force of arms? What there is left of me to save, said Mabon, must be taken by force. They returned then to Arthur and described to him the place of Mabon's prison. Arthur summoned the warriors of Britain, and they marched on Caer Loyu, where Mabon was held captive. Kai and Bedwar went on the shoulders of the salmon to the wall of Mabon's cell, and while Arthur and his men attacked the fortress on land, Kai broke through the wall and freed Mabon, son of Modron. He carried Mabon from that place and joined the fight, and afterward Arthur returned home with a freed Mabon. If you'd like to delve a little deeper into the topics in my videos, you might enjoy taking one of my online classes. You can find out more about them at the link which is on your screen now. You can also support my work on Ko-fi or by becoming a patron. You'll also find free content to read on my Patreon page and on my website. All the links are in the description.